Okay, so just give me one second. I'm just going to introduce our speaker. So again, we want to thank all the speakers, the amazing women who come on every single day. And we want to especially thank you, Deep Wolf, who is getting up early in Los Angeles, very early. It's a miracle. To do this for, for us. So lots of beautiful Hakara Satov. So Yehudit Wolf, founder of Beis Chana of California, a nonprofit religious organization, beischanaca.weebly.com, and founder of Stam Center LA, koshersofer.com. It always like, amazes me, the accomplishments of women, really, a Jewish woman. She teaches Hasidus, lectures, mentors, writes articles, 
and is facilitating the writing of a unity safe and torrent for soldiers. She lives with her husband, Safra Avram David Wolf, in Los Angeles. They travel to communities in the USA to bring the unity Torah for people to partake in writing the Torah. She is blessed with children and grandchildren. Yehudi received her teaching degree in Beis Rivka Kfar Chabad and was sent as an emissary shlucha by the Rebbe to California at the age of 20. Her passion is to connect people with their purpose through the inspiration and guidance of Hasidus. And we feel so grateful she's mm -hmm. going to be speaking to us today, bringing the Ula by thanking Hashem for three types of miracles. Thank you so much, Yehudi. We're looking forward. <laughs> I'm Thank going you. off, it's all yours. Thank you, Naomi. And um, Naomi um, prefaced um, that she's going to have to leave at a certain time. So if somebody in the Zoom or in the chat wants to tell me when it's time to stop, please do. <laughs> um, um, I have lots of miracle stories to tell, and I for sure will not be able to tell them all. Um, I do have um, uh, a YouTube channel where some of my classes are posted. It's based on a... Right now it's 5291, Reis 5291 on YouTube. I also have um, uh, Facebook. So with a lot of the classes daily, I teach Monday through Friday every morning at 10.30 Eastern time in the morning. So um, a Hasidus class with a wonderful group of women. You're all welcome to join. So you could all, um, let's see some of the recordings on Facebook for that too. In any event, the, so the class that I'm teaching now is also based on a lot of the classes that I've been teaching. And I'm only going to give you like a little, little tamsit, as they say, a little, a little tiny uh, droplet of uh, some of the teachings of the Rebbe and some of the miracles that I've been seeing and witnessing. And uh, somehow we'll reconnect with, with a more expansive one day. I hope to also write these things. And also we'll, we'll enc I encourage you to write any of your miracles that you see, especially if you see miracles that have to do with tefillin and mezuzahs and sifrei Torah, please send them to me because I'm collecting those stories. Um, so, so my story is a whole big miracle and I can't tell you my whole story either. And it's not about my story, it's about miracles, but my story is a miracle. Everybody's story here I'm sure is, is miraculous. The, the goal is as though that we will see the miracles. We should, that we wake up in the morning, we see it's a miracle that we woke up. We say, with the Annie, with the gratitude of a, of a miracle, of a neshama coming back into our body, that we see the news and we are able to translate it as, wow, there was a rocket and nobody was killed. There was 300, over 300 rockets and nobody was uh, scratched. Uh, no Jewish person was, was injured at all. The, the, um, it, it's a training, okay? So now the Rebbe helps us with, uh, gives us a lot of tools to bring Geula, a lot of tools. The Rebbe at one point gave us over in 1991, he said, it's, it's, he's giving over the task of bringing Geula to us, to each and every one of us. That means really each and every one of us. And uh, one of the ways that the Rebbe said is imperative and necessary in order to bring Geula is to be able to notice, see the miracles and thank Hashem for the miracles. And we all know, hopefully all know, have heard about Chizkiyahu Melech, when he had the big miracle of having his nation saved in a very, very open miracle of all the, all the enemies around, uh, surrounding the Rangers line just an overnight perished. It's just they woke up, there were all dead bodies over there. So he was supposed to say, thank Hashem, sing a shira and acknowledge Hashem for this big miracle. And uh, and Navi told him, because he didn't thank Hashem for this miracle with the singing uh, uh, the 10th song of Geula, Therefore, the uh, gula didn't happen completely. Well, Mashiach didn't um, reveal himself fully. So therefore, it's, the Rebbe said it's very, very important that we recognize the miracles and, and praise Hashem, thank Hashem properly for the miracles. That is revealing Hashem in the world. Now, the Rebbe also explains in these sikhas that it's Mashiach is not just going to be some sort of being that's going to uh, just appear and, and swoop us out of all the misery of Gullus with uh, magic wand as they could say right Mashiach is a process of us seeing the actual the miracles seeing Geula making Geula a reality and revealing Hashem in our daily life and in the world and revealing it not just to ourselves but revealing it to the entire world to the nations of the world to everybody in the world to be able to see that Hashem is Melech Hashem is our king so this is a process that we all need to really 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 take to heart very strong especially these holy women on this chat all of you have a big strong amuna 
a big strong um, uh, knowledge about Hashem and knowledge about the miracles and knowledge about a Geula. And the more we understand it, internalize it and reveal it to the world, the, the process is happening right now, revealing Geula, revealing Mashiach, revealing Hashem in the world. That's what we are actually activating and doing right now by our, with using our, our mind, our heart and our, and our actions, okay, our body. Okay so, um, okay, so I'm going to start first with the miracles, as a couple of quick anecdotes that I'm not going to actually be able to elaborate, it's already late. Um, when I was a teenager, I was in Yerushalayim in Beis Chana High School, Chabad High School, and I remember I didn't know Yiddish, my family's not uh, Chabad, I was in Chabad, but they sent me to Chabad High School, Baruch Hashem. And when I remember I used to go to hear the Rebbe's hookups, they didn't have videos in those days, this is the 80s, we had hookups in the middle of the night to hear the Rebbe speak, and the girls would come to the Torah Samus Yeshiva, and we'd hear the Rebbe in the middle of the night speaking, and it was Yiddish, so I didn't understand, so I'd ask the girls, what is the Rebbe saying, okay? So I'm, okay, so since, <laughs> uh, uh, one quick uh, story from that is, I remember one of the girls explained to you, the, the girls there knew Yiddish, a lot of them, she said, the Rebbe said that very soon, uh, the Jews from Russia are gonna come out of Russia, and somebody, we need to build housing for them in Etisol. And this was in the 80s, okay? This, is, <laughs> this was not, this was not uh, when there was any inkling. It was almost 70 years that no, nobody left uh, Russia. And I remember the Vilchaims that my teacher, Sabata or Blazer Manis, used to say it was like every Vilchaim or every Bracha was, and the Jews should come out of Russia. The Jews should be able to leave Russia, just like now we're saying, and, and all the Jews that are in captivity and all the soldiers that are in harm's way and all the hostages should be released. In those days, in the 80s, the, every bracha was in the, and Jews should come out of Russia. And that was like, it was, it, the thought of it happening as a young kid was like, it's, it's never gonna happen. When Mashiach comes, it's gonna happen, right? So in any event, that uh, I remember thinking in my mind as a teenager, I wonder who's gonna be that crazy chassid who's gonna go and build houses for Russian Jews. Who's gonna go and talk to you know the people and, and build Build apartments and houses for, for Russians that aren't aren't aren't. Uh, there's no no sign of anybody coming out soon, and there was a there was a such a crazy chassid, and he built Elo, a thousand apartments. In any event, the Jews uh, when they came out, there was immediately a housing crisis. There was a thousand apartments was not enough, and uh, they had to scramble to uh, help them find places and build places. Anyway, so that's one little story. Another very, very, uh, even more impactful story was when I was um, also 1981. And this was my first um, encounter with doing, uh, being sent by the Rebbe to do something for the Rebbe. What was it? We come to school one day, it was Eric Shavuos, and we're told no school today. The principal is closed in school. Why? Because on Shabbos, the Rebbe said that everybody should drop everything and they should go sell letters and a Sefer Torah, okay? That's Sefer Torah Klali, a general Sefer Torah that's for all the Jews. To each person can get one letter in the Sefer Torah. So, so that, so, I, okay, I didn't know how or what. It was, I was a shy little kid. <laughs> I thought I was 16. Um, but my friends went, we went together to Keva Rachel, and we offered people to buy for whatever price a letter in a Sefer Torah Klali for all Jews to unite in one Sefer Torah. And the Rebbe said, it's because the world is shaking. The world is not safe. Basically, he didn't say the word not safe at that, at that sikh, I don't think, but um, the, he said the world is, yeah, maybe he said it's not safe, it's shaking, it's trembling. Um, for the sake to safeguard Yidin, we have to buy letters and safe us. So we explained that to people and they bought letters and at any amount. Then the next day was Shavuos and we heard, right after Shavuos, we heard that the um, over Shavuos, the Israelis bombed the nuclear reactor in Iraq. Saddam Hussein was almost about to finish his reactor. They had no choice. They sent six pilots, uh, not knowing if they'll be able to achieve their mission, not knowing if they'll come back. And it was a big, big, huge miracle and a big shock. So that was my first encounter of recognizing the miracles that the Rebbe could foresee and, 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 and send us on these missions that you know, seemed a little odd and unusual. I mean, what 16-year-old girls, Israeli, Chabad, you know, from girls going out to sell letters in a safe tour. So that was, um, the, then we understood though the next day. So it was on my flesh. Now, the, other, the miracle within the miracle is that 
Now I'm married to a cyber. And when October 7th came around, I told my husband, I think really the Sefer Torah that he's, he's in the middle of writing, I said, really you should make this a, a Sefer Torah Klali so that everybody could have a letter in the Sefer Torah and have this chus of the protection of the Sefer Torah. And he said, yeah, but the person who commissioned me, I can't ask him to do that. He, well, he's writing it for Lilu Nishma somebody. So he, he put it aside. However, on my class, I, I, I'm sure you all know Alyssa, she comes sometimes to Nishma. She actually is a connector over here. For me to speak today. So she came up with the idea also. And I said, Yeah, I, I also had this idea that it should be a Sefer Torah Kali. She said, Why don't you have your husband write it for a Sefer Torah Kali? I said, He said, He can't ask. So she said, She'll ask. So she asked the person who's commissioned the Sefer Torah um, originally. And he said, he said Yes, we asked the Rav. He passed in. As long as the, as the person who commissioned said uh, it's okay with them, we can make it open up to Sefer Torah Kali. So, what's a Sefer Torah Kali? That we, we made it for the soldiers, though, not for everybody. This Sefer Torah, he agreed that all the soldiers could have a letter in the Sefer Torah. So, each soldier can buy up one letter for any amount. It could be a shekel. And basically, he owns that letter and that unites 304,805 soldiers in one letter, one Torah. So, each have one letter in this Torah. They all own a part of this Torah together. So it doesn't belong to any specific one individual, it belongs to all of them. So what does, spiritually, what does this do? There, I've explained that, that if they go to the battlefield, God forbid, they sh the, the enemy will be so scared of them because they'll see not just one soldier, they'll see 304,805 soldiers all together and when the power of them, the, to a point that ever says that it should, it should be that they should, that the enemy won't even want to come to the battlefield. Not only that, the Rebbe also, so also, also said that if every soldier would have uh, or would have had, he said this in, during the Lebanon War in, 19, in 1982, the Rebbe spoke a lot about the Sefer Torah call, and he said if every soldier would have had a letter in the Sefer Torah, tragedies would have been prevented. So in any event, so the miracle within the miracle is that I got to be part of that in 1981, that this, the initiation of the Sefer Torah Kalali Mibsa. And now I'm married to a Sefer. And now I'm able to facilitate that we do have a Sefer Torah Kalali, that soldiers can each own a letter in the Sefer Torah. And um, the, the, we've been thinking since November we started this, uh, what we can do to bring it out to more people and more awareness and to more soldiers to know about it. And one of the things that we decided to do is that my, actually my husband and I bring this, this cloth of the Sefer Torah to different events that are already happening. Like we just, there were 8,000 people at the Lagba Omer parade, uh, this Lagba Omer, and we brought the Sefer Torah there and we um, I made huge banners. So this was all miraculous because people were able to come and actually um, see the Sefer Torah. Some people even got to write a letter and, and got to um, be part of this mitzvah. There was one uh, uh, father uh, of uh, a, a soldier who survived miraculously. All his unit was killed in that friendly fire. Um, the incident, I, I believe it was when there was an explosion. And um, his son, who's there, I guess this alone soldier, is um, was miraculously saved. In any event, every event that we go to, there's people who have relatives, friends, uh, mostly relatives in the army, and they give us their names, and they buy them a letter in the Sefer Torah. So the, the, I want to tell you a few more uh, miracles with, with Tefillin Mezuzahs and, uh, and, and the Sefer Torah. First of all, when, uh, when we first started the Sefer Torah, I, I told my husband, I, want, I don't want to wait till we get, find people to buy letters for the hostages. I'll just buy for the 200 hostages. Right now, I gave them a, a piece of uh, a, a little, uh, some cash. I said, this is for the hostages that we have names for. At that point, we didn't have all the names yet. It was right, right afterwards. And, um, and th that was at night. In the morning, we woke up to the news that the first two hostages were released. Okay. So that was for me like also another sign. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. This is an important mitzvah uh, that can save and help, pe help people very much. In any event, it's bringing awareness. Because also every place we go, we also bring awareness not just of the Sefer Torah, Kali, but also Mrs. and Film in general. So it's been a, it's been one miracle after another every event that we go to. And now we had um, the ladies in my Zoom class had an idea of doing it also that the cipher could be on Zoom or on WhatsApp or um, broadcasted at any time. And uh, soldiers or people in Nazi Soul that go to soldiers or connect to soldiers can. Um, as have the soldiers see my husband live writing the Sefer Torah and giving them his, their name over the, the Zoom or the, the WhatsApp. 
So that's another idea that we're thinking about how to how to make that happen. And even these are all miracles. Okay, so now I want to give you though, since we don't have much time, from the Rebbe, at least in a short tamsit, like um, a little little um, right, short, 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 short version of the three types of miracles, because that was the topic. So, and it's very important, and it's more elaborated in, in this book, the Dvar Malchus of the Rebbe, that we learn every morning, um, word for word, with the footnotes, and the scoop, and on the Zoom, and um, 10.30 a.m. on Monday through Friday, which you're all welcome to join. So this, this, um, this idea in very, very short form, there's, uh, the Rebbe explains how there's Hashem reveals himself in the miracles within nature, okay? Then there's the miracles that Hashem performs to us um, more above nature, and that's revealed to us also through levels of uh, Torah, Torah insight, seeing Torah, and understanding Torah, and seeing, uh, seeing things that are above and beyond, the miracles of Hashem as he performs above nature. And then there's the miracles that we can see through learning Hasidus, okay? Chassidus is the inner dimensions of Torah. It's the hidden, hidden secrets and parts of Torah that are more, take more of a deeper understanding of Hashem. And that's what Chassidus teaches, a deeper awareness of Hashem so that we could see things on a deeper level. So I'll just give you quickly some examples. Like seeing Hashem within nature, the way I would translate it is seeing the Ashkacha Patit, right? Well, seeing, you know, Hashem put my neshama back in the morning. I woke up, that's, that's seeing Hashem within nature, okay? And then we could take it to deeper level of like seeing like Hashem is orchestrating everything. Um, for me, like I woke up exactly a miracle. I woke up on time today to be able to teach you. I was able to get the, my shaito was done because uh, I had done the gimel, the, <laughs> I had it done for, for an event. So I had my shaito ready. I had everything, okay. Like all the little myriads of the little details of, and then I ran into this person and I ran into that person and then Alyssa told this, seeing Hashem, right? That we see all the time and we look for it and when we see it, we're noticing Hashem within nature. Then there is a level of Hashem above nature, okay? That's more miraculous. That's like, for instance, we dive in and we see that the person who was sick got better miraculously beyond what the doctor said. Or we fix a... Uh, um, uh, our mezuzah and we see that when we're checking the mezuzah I have so many stories of that um, how the, the mezuzah exactly coincided with what was going on and I have such good stories to tell you of happening here in California uh, all, all the times so, you know the, just amazing amazing how the words in the in the mezuzah coincided with the, exactly what was going on just recently two stories of people got injured between the eyes on the forehead and the mezuzah was puzzle, and the words, one of them was my friend Tiffy. Her husband was injured very, very severely. Baruch Hashem is all better now. And the test of letatafos bein anecha was, was, was puzzle. And a girl, a woman just told me uh, uh, last week that her son or daughter, this was a few years ago, was injured also, um, hit their head between the eyes. And the word yud, the letter yud, and the word beinenech in between your eyes was missing. So there's all these like hashkacha patit that we see more through a mitzvah or through Torah, through davening, through a mitzvah, and we see the the yeshus and the and the miracles happening through Torah. So this is really I'm giving it to you very 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 like raw and <laughs> um, without the deeper explanations. And here there it goes into it very very deeply about how Torah, Kad Mala Olam, came before the world, the, Torah, the world was created through the Torah. Um, and there's many stories of how, like, I remember this, there was Hannah Arnold, she, she, Alea Shalom, she lived here. She wrote to the Rebbe once that she, she can't wear shaitel because it, 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 it gives her headaches. And the Rebbe says, it's not possible that a mitzvah in the Torah would cause you harm. And it must be something that she's doing in the way she's wearing her head covering that's causing it. She should look into, she should look into something else that's causing the headaches, not or he didn't say the way you're wearing the, the head covering. I'm saying he said it must be something else that's causing, causing the headaches. In any event, so the, the, the point is, is that Tar and Mitzvahs also can reveal to us, you know, a, a deeper level, especially when we have a Navi, a, a prophet, a tzaddik, a rabbi, giving us instructions and we see how the instructions work above and beyond uh, the natural things. You know, the fact that I'm speaking here to you is also a miracle because I am a very shy person. And um, the, it's only the Rebbe's um, vision and the Rebbe instructing me to, to, to do what I'm doing, to teach Hasidus, to found a, a Moisev, 
that is that I'm even speaking. But we see miracles upon miracles upon miracles more and more the more we tune into this level. Then there's the miracle of the that we can see when we learn Hasidus. Now Hasidus connects us to Hashem in a much, much, much deeper way because we we're learning about Hashem Himself in Hasidus. And we, we come to more of a recognition that Hashem is giving us our, our, our highest and our existence, um, creating us at every second from nothing to something, at every moment. And our neshama, what our neshama is, our neshama is part of Hashem. And we, the more we learn and the more we integrate, the more we meditate, the more we see, the more we experience all these understandings of Hasidus, the, the more wow and the more insights we have of being on a level of of really, really seeing miracles deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's already six o'clock, almost like two minutes. So, um, <laughs> you, did you, you can go, yeah. you can go, you can start a little bit late. I, I, I can leave here by, by 10 after. 10 after, okay. So, okay. so go ahead. Okay, so do you have more stories or do you have more explanation? Which no, one? Give us, give us, give us, give us explanation. Explanation about it. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, so one of the things that they really, really, really wanted uh, us to be able to come to is an understanding of Hashem, the point where, uh, where we can actually have our own insights into our men, women, and children. And these, that's part of also revealing Hashem in the Torah that we're learning and being able to um, um, uh, bring our own chidosh to the world. That is important because we're, bringing our own unique neshamas, awarenesses, and understandings of Hashem into the world. That's revealing Hashem on another level. And each person has their own capacity to reveal Hashem in the world based on their neshamas level and their neshama, what it experienced in life, their neshamas, awarenesses of, of Hashem and learning of Torah. So every person has something to reveal of Hashem in the world. That's their unique purpose and mission. Which, by the way, that I've said, if everybody was tuned into their mission, and their purpose, then then they're, they're, the whole world would be b'menucha, tranquil, peaceful, because um, the, uh, the only reason we're not b'menucha or the world is not b'menucha is because people don't know they have a purpose and a mission. They don't know they were why they were created or that they were created and they're here to serve Hashem. So it's our job really to reveal to the whole world that we're, Hashem created us. Hashem is giving us life and he's giving us all the talents and all the understandings, all the awarenesses for us to understand Hashem better and reveal Hashem in the world. And each person has a way of understanding Hashem, revealing Hashem through their own uh, learning. So there was says anybody who has the ability to learn Torah and has the ability to see Hashem and understand Hashem more has an obligation to give it over and teach people with whatever level they're at. Okay, so, and that's their own awarenesses. Now, in order to get there though, we have to have a bitl, we have to have an, an understanding that it's really Hashem's Torah and it's Hashem giving it to us and Hashem revealing it to us, okay? It's not our ego, it's not who, we didn't create ourselves and give ourselves our brain and our heart and our, and our understanding and our talents, okay? And have that bitl that it's, we're doing it for Hashem. If we have our ego, we won't want to speak because we'll either be too embarrassed or too proud or too this or too that, um, or too distracted or too busy or too, uh, or, 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 or too demanding of other things. The, the, the bittel is what gives us the capacity to be able to be really in tune. Hashem's will is that we be conduits of revealing Hashem's Torah in the world. And then, so there's two levels of revealing Hashem's Torah. One is, we, it, it, it is like the Rebbe says, we could all be like Moshe Rabbeinu, Hashem speaks through us. If we have bitl, and that's bitl is nafshi ka'afa that we have like our ability to be like, like dust before everyone. We have the ability to understand that it's all Hashem uh, working through us. Then we can be conduits of revealing Hashem through, through us and asking Hashem to help put the words in our mouth and being able to do that. So if you have somebody that, for instance, and a small example, if you want to bring somebody an awareness of a mitzvah or an awareness of their neshama, and you're hesitant, and you're saying, how can I speak to this person? And the, I don't know what to say. You can ask Hashem, please put the words in my mouth and try to relate to the person's um, you know, common, common thing and their awareness that, and the, the fact that they do have a neshama and a godly soul within them. There was a there was there's a person here in town um, who 
um, does shaitals for women. And I drop as a salon and I would drop the shaitals off and I see as a lot of like idols, little whatever statues. <laughs> and I said to him, you can't have these things in your house. You know, he's Israeli. And he says, why didn't anybody else tell me? I said, well, my name is Yehudit and Yehudit is Yehudit is only Hashem. You, you got to get rid of these, um, of these, um, these idols. And he, he got rid of most of them. I had him, I put him on the phone with my love to speak to him about what he can keep, what not. And he's, and um, the, um, he said, why didn't anybody else tell me? There's a lot of Rebbitsons who come here. And I said to him, because um, they saw your tattoos <laughs> and they got scared. <laughs> I said, I could see your neshama. Your neshama really, really is a, a holy pure neshama and doesn't want to have these idols. So we have to come to people from that place, not to look at the, the external, look at their neshama. And Hashem will put the words within our mouth to, to the right thing to say, hopefully, and ask Hashem, you know, to hopefully say the right thing. And if it, it doesn't sound good enough to you, don't don't worry, you could always readjust or Hashem will readjust it. But don't don't judge yourself so much that you can, you know, that you can't uh, um, bring some awareness to somebody with love. Okay, so that's 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 one level of being able to be revealing to our, to the world. The other level is, as the Rebbe says, is to come to a place where we can actually make our own chidushim, which is what the, what the the, the, the rabbis say is um, uh, whatever a talmid batik asi bechadesh was revealed to Moshe Rabbeinu and Har Sinai. Anything that any person would uh, elaborate and understand and come to an awareness of their own when they're learning Torah. And so there is, there is a, a thing also it says that Hashem sits and listens to our, 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 our learning and he agrees. I, I don't remember the exact wording right now. It's in this, um, it's in the Sikha of the Havach, of course, I believe, of, uh, from Malchus 1991. So the, the, the point that the Rebbe explains is, is that we, if we have an, an ability to learn Torah and we have an ability to connect to Hashem uh, through learning Torah, not to our ego, we have, we have an obligation to try to understand it in a way that we can understand it deeply and share it with other people. And that is revealing Hashem through Torah and revealing Hashem in the world. And that is revealing the Ula. Okay, so that goes now. When we see also the, the, the amazing wonders in Torah, which we can see through learning Hasidus, Torah with Hasidus, which is really the Pella of Torah, the, seeing Hashem in the Torah, learning about Hashem is a wondrous thing. That brings us to even more the revelations of the times of Geula, times of Mashiach, which are very, 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 very amazing and deeper and deeper and deeper until the full revelations will be in the true and complete redemption, where we'll all really fully, fully understand Hashem and see Hashem in everything. And there's many, many, many very, very amazing chidushim of the Rebbe explaining the Gola process, why we need to go through the pain and the suffering of Gola to reveal the Geula, why there's Hashem hides himself and we see painful events and we see difficult things and we see unholiness and we see two men, we see uh, uh, people opposing. All these things are explained by the Rebbe with the lens of Hasidus so that we can see that really we have this opportunity of transforming the Golas into Gula. It's our job to be able to being a consciousness and awareness in the pain and the suffering. And there was a, though we've done it for so many, so many generations and so many years, we're done. We really, at this point, we don't need to do any more. And we, uh, we should just be able to reveal Hashem in the chidushim of Torah rather than in the painful experiences of concealment of Hashem. And the more we reveal Hashem in the world, the more the world is a vessel for Hashem's revelations of what's Geula. Geula is the whole world will see that Hashem, Echad, Hashem is our king, Hashem is here, we'll, we'll, right? It says that all the nations of the world will come to serve Hashem, it says, and it also says, all, all flesh, all flesh, not just Jews, will see that Hashem spoke, and it says everybody will be sitting and learning Torah. So that's our job, ladies, and uh, to be able to continue to positively push forward with your own unique talents, understandings, awarenesses, it's all good. <laughs> it's all for everybody to share, to give over and bring it Ula. Okay, thank you, ladies. It's six, I believe it's, it's yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. first, of all, first of all, I want to just thank you so much. Thanks. It was really, really beautiful. It was really, really painful. Hey, I have more stories. I have a lot more stories. <laughs>
Baruch Hashem. And I will share, I yeah. will share um, on the WhatsApp group uh, yeah. your information. So okay. everybody will be able to, um, will be able to, Merit Hashem, if they want to take your classes, they can take your classes. And um, we thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Um, thank you. I just want to mention to everybody, yeah. thank you. I just want to mention to everybody that tomorrow, um, tomorrow we are going to um, try to do 100 Tikkun Aklawis again mm. uh, for, the, for the safety of Am Yisrael and our soldiers and our, our wounded and, um, and, and our hostages. So if everybody can bring in people, that would be amazing. I also just, I, I got to run, but I got to tell you that I was, I was again, um, reached out to by somebody in California who is in touch with, um, is in touch with the family from that boy. And I understand that his situation is extremely dire. Um, and he basically, he has, they feel just two weeks. So she wants um, us to set up a worldwide um, Zoom on Rosh Chodesh Sivan. Um, we need a Zoom link that would be more than 1,000 people. So I, I can pay up my Zoom to 1,000. After that, it just gets way too expensive. Um, but um, if anybody knows anybody that has uh, the capabilities of a Zoom of 5,000, I am going to reach out to somebody else. Um, if, um, so, so please uh, let me know. So tomorrow we're going to do the Tikkun Aklali. We'll do our... our uh, the regular as Yashir, everything else. And then again, I will send out the flyer. We have uh, we have the most beautiful week this week and next week, Baruch Hashem, we're starting off with uh, Rivka Malka Prom on Sunday. And um, it, it's really uh, five days next week we're doing speakers. Mm -hmm. So um, before Shavuos, all of Shavuos, to take us into Matan Torah. So again, I want to thank you, Udid. I have to run. Thank you, everybody, so much. And I will share her information. Thanks, Yudi, for getting up early and teaching us, giving us your your beauty and your 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 talent and and, and your your actualization that a Kaddish Baruch who gave you. Thank you and thank you for sharing thank that you, with us. Okay, everybody, have a great day. Hope to be well. Thanks so much. Thank you 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 so much. Th